The next speaker is Mr Agnew, followed by Ms. Gladf Mr Gladfellow. Thank, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Mrs Polson, please don't take my comments personally, but I really do not think the solution to this problem is yet more EU legislation. We've got a lot of EU legislation. The problem is enforcement. And that problem is compounded by the fact there are 27 member states and they share, they don't share, they have very different cultures. This is the problem here. These laws are not being enforced in certain member states. So, for example, there is laws on, laws on animal transport. They're adequate. They're not being enforced. There are laws about not having battery cages for hens. You've heard enough about that from me for the last two years. But they're still in the cages. Proposed laws about sow stalls. I'll bet, I will bet anyone here money that we're going to see the same scenario with battery cages all over again. Again, political correctness comes into this. There are certain religions and sects who slaughter animals in different ways, and many of them do it very, very badly. But because of moral cowardice and we don't want to be politically incorrect, we don't go after these people. We let them get away with it. There was a comment down there about cash grants and putting EU money into this. This is so unfair on the farmers who have already borrowed money to comply. They're immediately at a competitive disadvantage. And even if all these laws were enforced in the EU, which I think is highly unlikely, there's still the problem of the WTO. You cannot ban the import of something if you, just because you disagree with the way it was produced. So I see a different solution to this altogether, and it isn't EU rules. It's consumers doing what egg consumers did 30 or 40 years ago, saying we want free-range eggs. And the private sector built up its own base of rules on that. And I'm part of that, and I can tell you that it works. Consumers have got to tell the retailers, we only want meat, etc., from animals that have been well treated, and it's up to the retailers to have their assurance schemes. That is the way to do it. On the other side of the coin, the negative side, in a culture which is keen on animal welfare, such as my country, we have something called the RSPCA. People voluntary, con voluntarily contribute large sums of money to them, and the RSPCA will bring private prosecutions. In other words, there are members of the public who are members of this organization who will be looking at farms, they will be looking at animals in distress, they will report that to the RSPCA who will do something about it. May I stress again, EU rules are not the way ahead here. Thank you.